levels of damage have been discovered in trees near cell phone towers. One strong theme among the citizenry of the world that receives no mainstream media attention is the issue of cell phone towers and the health environmental threats they pose. There are thousands of peer-reviewed publications in vivo and in vitro that make it quite clear that electromagnetic radiation from our favorite gadgets, wireless devices, as well as the cell phone towers all over the globe are having a biological impact that's a great cause for concern or at the very least warrant appropriate safety tests before we continue down this path. This is something that has yet to be done though. This is exactly why a few years ago, 200 scientists petitioned the United Nations to look deeper into this issue to no avail. Numerous recent scientific publications have shown that EMF affects living organisms at levels well below most international and national guidelines. Effects include increased cancer risk, cellular stress, increase in harmful free radicals, genetic damages, structural and functional changes in the reproductive system, learning and, man and memory de uh, deficits, neurological disorders, and negative impacts on general well-being in humans. Damage goes well beyond the human race as there is growing evidence of harmful effects both to both plant and animal life. Human health is not the only concern. In a study published in Science of the Total Environment, researchers found high-level damages in trees within the vicinity of phone masts. They said, we found out that from the damaged side, there was always visual contact to one or more phone masts. Statistical analysis demonstrated that the electromagnetic radiation from cell phone towers is harmful to trees. Results show that the measurement is the most effective size of damaged trees, hence those with that withstand higher radiation levels are different to all other groups. These results are consistent with the fact that damage inflicted on trees by cell phone towers usually start on one side, extending to the whole tree over time. This constitutes a danger for trees worldwide, of course. The further deployment of phone mass has to be stopped. Scientific research on trees under the real radio frequency field conditions must continue. The study lasted for nine years and used more than 100 trees. The field monitoring part of the study was performed in Bamberg and Hallstatt, Germany, and observations and photographic recordings of unusual or unexplained tree damage were taken along with the measurements of electromagnetic radiation. In 2015, measurements of RF, EMF, that's radio frequency electromagnetic fields, were carried out. A polygon spanning both cities was used was uh, chosen as a study site where 144 measurements of the radio frequencies of electromagnetic fields were taken at a height of about a meter and a half in streets and parks at different locations. By interpolation of the 144 measurement points, we were able to compile an electromagnetic map of the power flux density in Bamberg and Halstad. We selected 60 damaged trees in addition to 30 randomly selected trees and 30 trees in low radiation areas in this polygon. The measurement of all trees revealed significant difference between the damaged side facing a phone mast and the opposite side, as well as differences between the exposed side of damaged trees and all other groups of trees in both sides. Thus, we found that side differences uh, in measurement values, measured values of power flux density corresponded to side differences in damage. The 30 selected trees in low radiation areas, no visible, no visual contact to, uh, contact to any phone mast and power flux density, showed no damage. Statistical analysis demonstrates that electromagnetic radiation from mobile phone mass is harmful for trees. These results are consistent with the fact that damage inflicted on trees by mobile phone towers usually start on one side extending to the whole tree over time. What's also interesting is that the study points out that natural forms of electromagnetic radiation are not the same and do not have the same impact as unnatural sources of radiation due to, uh, to plant life, do on plant life. Several researchers have pointed out how this topic has received little attention and these physiological effects are being considered negligible. The study also concludes that most studies 
that have addressed the effects of microwaves on animals and plants have documented effects and responses at exposures below limits specified in the electromagnetic radiation exposure guidelines, and it's therefore necessary to rethink these guidelines. Since 2005, on the occasion of medical examinations of sick residents living near mobile phone base stations, changes in nearby trees, that is the crown, leaves, trunk, branches, and growth, were observed at the same time as clinical symptoms in humans occurred. Since 2006, tree damages in the radiation field of mobile phone base stations were documented, and trees that were in the radio shadow of buildings or of other trees remain healthy because the researchers hypothesized they were protected from the radiation. The research on EMFs and their environmental impact is quite limited, and studies on humans show that this type of radiation affects biological organisms, especially humans. For example, a paper published in 2018 in Environmental Research titled Wi-Fi is an Important Threat to Human Life points out that repeated Wi-Fi studies show that Wi-Fi causes oxidative stress, sperm testicular damage, neuropsychiatric effects including EEG changes, apoptosis, cellular DNA damage, endocrine changes, and calcium overload. Now what about 5G? When it comes to 5G, a study published in 2019 in Frontiers in Public Health is one of many that raises concern about 5G technology. It points out that novel 5G technology is being rolled out in a serial, uh, several densely populated cities, although potential chronic health or environmental impacts have not been evaluated and are not being followed. It goes on to emphasize that the range and magnitude of potential impacts of 5G technologies are under-researched, although important biological outcomes have been reported with millimeter wavelength exposure. These include oxidative stress and altered gene expression, effects of skin, on skin and systematic effects on such as the immune function, in vivo studies reporting resonance with human sweat ducts, acceleration of bacterial and viral replication, and other endpoints indicate the potential for novel as well as more commonly recognized biological impacts from this range of frequencies and highlight the need for research before population-wide continuous exposures. Let's put in this uh, again, repeat this. In vivo studies reporting resonance with human sweat ducts Acceleration of bacterial and viral replication. I wonder if the increase in uh, coronavirus infections has to do with uh, the availability of 5G technology in the areas where these high infection rates are occurring because of the fact that they cause uh, the 5G technology causes acceleration of bacterial and viral replication. Now, it's one of many studies that have raised concerns about 5G, so what can we do? We can share information, educate people, and create awareness, and the more we do this, the more we manifest actions that tackle this issue where it needs to be tackled. And that being said, it's quite concerning that this technology is simply being rolled out without our approval or any safety testing. It begs the question, do we really live in a democracy? This uh, article is, uh, was originally created on Collective Evolution, published here under Creative Commons, and uh, it's on Collective Spark by Stephen Camley. Please leave your comments about this. This is a very important topic. It has to do with not only our health, human health, but all life on Earth. And please uh, ring the bell for more updated videos. Subscribe and share, and thank you for your support. And if you'd like, please support my Patreon channel. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media.
These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.